Hello all of you! As you might remember, I've bought a new lab about two years ago and it needed a lot of renovation. And during the renovation sometimes I needed custom parts which I 3D printed. And well, I'm not a particularly creative person, so I decided to enlist the help of OpenSCAD which is a 3D modeling program intended for programmers and other non-traditional creatives. And because it all worked so well, I wrote a book, which is available both in German and English. And today I wanted to show you what you can expect in this thing. Well, as you see here, this is the English edition. The outside is pretty robust, it's color printed. And the cool thing is, the inside, as you see, is also fully colored. This is one of the first books which are made in a new generation of Elector's printing process. And as said, it's fully color throughout the entire tome. And so, well, well, to get started, you see here we've got some practical examples from my property. Soap holders, all this kind of stuff, humidor things. And then you see here the installation. We're installing OpenSCAD both on Linux and also on Windows. And then it's already time to get started with the product. You see here we are coding and then we render the code and the code then becomes a three dimensional object. And this, what sounds quite simple at first, actually already pretty well describes the strengths and limits of OpenSCAD. You create a model using a Python-like language and then you render it. Given that I've targeted the book explicitly at IT professionals, you see that we start with relatively somewhat complex examples, but not too complex. So you see it's not an explanation how to code, but rather you see here we start with the individual objects, which we then combine to create the final object, just like the Pokemon would touch the individual parts of the area. And then the rest of the chapter, you see here, it's basically rendering, rendering more objects, rendering round objects, coloring the objects, and this kind of stuff. And one thing which I really want to mention is that I've tried to let you take the benefits of my practical experience. You'll often find such blue boxes, such as these, where I'm giving practical examples, such as here in this case, a comparison of the results of a preview and of a final rendering, so that you can easily assess which of the two rendering processes is better suited to your needs. This obviously is not a book on practical 3D printing. It's rather about the modeling. But as you see here, the circle approximation is explained in quite some detail. And as you see here, I'm also explaining how this circle approximation process actually affects the results of the final models using actual 3D printed objects. Then, of course, there's the obligatory LeCroix screenshot, along with a basic explanation of why you should use the 2D modeling features of OpenSCAD and what they can do for you to make modeling structures such as this vase here easier, because basically you just take a two-dimensional shape and then you extrude it. And, of course, handwritten graphics galore. So if you like this channel, and you know how I visualize things, there's more of that in the book. And then here you see another one of the worked examples. You see this object and surprise, surprise, it also exists in reality. So as I promised, you see from close up, many of the objects which we are going to be using in the book are real objects which I've used in my consulting practice or in my property. Then, of course, the next step, this thing here, you see, we are building a button because the buttons always fall off. And I had to 3D print a replacement button for a friend recently. 
and this is shown in some detail, also to motivate the use of functions such as for and other advanced programming methodologies. And also you see here the various debug operators, which make finding problems in your OpenSCART script easier. Yeah, well, text rendering has to be, you see here, if you don't render, then you can't put text on the models. And of course, also here, there's some practical explanation advising you to put versioning information onto your printouts as to make it easier to track them. And you know, I used to do some shader programming in the past. Of course, working with height maps and this kind of stuff also gets detailed. Minkowski operator, of course, you see explanation, how to rescue artifacts, how it works, how it affects whole diameters, basically everything you would like to know if you use OpenSCAD as a technical modeling system. You see, creating some gears, creating an object which takes a hex nut, all this kind of stuff. And then of course, a very short chapter on value added services, such as the Python interface and the customizer, all this kind of stuff, which you can sometimes use. As you see. And at the end, we have a little bit of an index. Well, as you might have seen, the books like 200 pages. It's not tremendously long. You can easily read it in a day or two days, or I always say a three hour first class trip on the train is enough to dig through it. And my target is not to cover completely everything. My goal with this book was to give you the tools to quickly and easily create models, which you can then use in various applications. And yeah, finally, another picture on the back. That's me, or that's me how I used to look many, many moons ago. Well, of course, from a media centric point of view, what should I say? Please buy my book. Of course, it's the best book on the market. Hey, somebody needs to pay for my cigars. But jokes aside, with this book, I've really tried to create a text which is helpful for programmers and electronical engineers who want to get into the world of OpenSCAD quickly and effortlessly. So I would be very honored if you would buy a copy and you'd either also make a review or just send me a comment what you'd like me to change or to improve. With that, thank you very much for being around and I hope you'll enjoy working with OpenSCAD or with whatever else you're currently working on. Thank you once again for being around. And don't forget to subscribe.